What's up? What's up? What's up, everybody? BQ here and TW with the Cool Factor podcast brought to you by the Impact Lounge. This is dropping a few days later than we normally like to do it. Um, You were sick. Did you end up having COVID? I didn't. I didn't. I beat it. I beat beat it. it. (laughs) Yeah, Donald Trump style. It was just a cold. 24 hours later. Okay, cool. If Trump could survive COVID, I could survive COVID. But I didn't actually have COVID, so I'm not tempting fate. I'm just saying. I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that, that threw us off a little bit. You know what I mean? We roll with the punches, so we're knocking this out. This is coming. This is dropping the day of impact. So it's Impact Tuesday, and then we're gonna have to turn around again and, and knock another one out. But um, that's the deal. So we were getting ready to do this podcast last week. So some of the news we're gonna be talking about is not as fresh as we would have liked to like to talk about I mean, we know obviously we like to talk about it a lot sooner but we are going to talk about some of the the hot button topics going on with the company so um if it's your first time checking us out make sure to subscribe wherever you're listening this is the cool factor again brought to you by the impact lounge um let's get into this first this, this is off script a little bit from what we were going to talk about because this is news that just dropped today and i did an upload on it already but we're going to talk a little bit about it and that's eric young He's been injured. He's, uh, I believe now, after a little more news came out that he got injured in that thousandth match with James Storm, which, mm. which really sucks. And now, now if you know tomorrow you're, you're sending out the tweets, don't forget to watch James Storm's thousandth match. It's kind of <laughs> right. like tonight, you know. It's like, all right, we're gonna see Eric him. Young's last match. Yeah, <laughs> his last match, his <clears throat> career-ending match. Um, no, not not a career ender, but uh let, you, yo let me put this out there first we're gonna this is a little bit off topic but kind of on topic so last week and this is another reason we didn't we didn't record when we wanted to um i had to stay the night in in a uh a sleep center because for getting treated for sleep apnea and they actually had access tv and they had uh i watched impact in 60. Uh-huh. I, I didn't like it this is the first time i've ever watched it oh and it, they were playing like legitimate classic James Storm matches, not like uh, check out this classic uh, Bram versus, you know, whatever, you know, like the <laughs> feed us some bullshit. Sometimes like these there were some legitimate classic matches with Storm and um, had the Elix skipper spot and all that shit. Mm. I didn't like it, dude. Like I, there's something about just watching that stuff that I think it's because. I see the the atmosphere and the crowd and all that, and just like yeah. so hot, dude. And you got like, if you look at the front row, there's actually like really attractive hot chicks in the front row. <laughs> like, and, and it's not to put down anyone that, you know, females are watching now, but what I'm saying is like, now the impact audience is, it just looks, I don't know, M- much like what t- maybe today's AEW audience looks like, impact uh-huh. audience look about, like back then. It's just, okay. I guess what I'm getting on, they're just young early 20s just like you know just like they, wrestlers waiting for their turn to get on the show yeah yeah living the like AEW that. audience was like now it's wrestlers right, right. just born on the show tonight right 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 so i mean <laughs> just a very dim- different atmosphere the way it looked and you know the commentary was good and it was passionate it was loud and then the, yeah. the lights are bright and then we we watch this show and it's just oh, dark and dreary <laughs> i didn't like it man um I didn't think I would. That's why I've really never tuned into it. Yeah. Everyone knows I'm not a big fan of like watching the old stuff. You know, that's that's mm-hmm. not a secret. But so anyway, uh let's let's turn it from Storm to Eric Young and now Eric Young uh was injured. The way I see it, this is bad for Violent by Design. It's bad for the company because they're already really lacking that main event top talent. It's been a while since he's been in the main event. Like he's been He's been in the mid card with Violent by Design. He's been the mouthpiece. There's we we talked a little bit offline where, you know, I was kind of talking about you know Dark Order. Brody Lee died, and it was like the group found a way to press forward without their leader. You know, maybe they're not doing the most interesting stuff at the moment, but they found a way to press forward because a couple of them could talk. Like Violent by Design doesn't have that dude. He's just going to step in, and I'm I'm the new leader, and you know. So I think but it hurts. Rhino has a trophy, so he does, which is a lot bigger than the the uh, X division, the uh, what the one Ace Austin's carrying around, whatever yeah. whatever it's called, the uh, Super X Cup. Yeah, so I'm gl- you know I'm glad they're not igno- uh, ignoring that happened because my gut told me they were going to completely ignore that Rhino had that thing. So yeah, uh, that's interesting. 
So I don't know. Um, I can't think of a time in wrestling other than recently Britt Baker and then Paige several years ago. Okay. Where they got hurt and they kept them on screen. Mm. You know, like the article I was reading today was, oh, you know, he can still be the leader and the mouthpiece. And I mean, I guess hypothetically that could happen. Maybe he does come but If he has a torn ACL, I don't really see him coming down unless it's in a wheelchair, probably not a wheelchair, but I don't really see how they're going to keep him, keep him on. And it's going to hurt the group because they don't, you know, Joe Doring or Rhino or Diener, they not, they can't step up, be, be the talker. And I think Diener's no. character would hurt a lot if he was forced to talk. So, um, got any thoughts on the Eric Young thing? Because when I texted you about it today, you weren't, I guess you were working, so you weren't familiar with what happened. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I wasn't familiar with it. Um, obviously, you know, it stinks for Eric Young, you know, as a performer, he's really a utility player. He can do it all. They can put him in any type of spot. You know, we've seen throughout his career in uh, TNA slash Impact Wrestling that he can fill any type of role that they need him to. So, you know, you never get better by losing somebody like that from your roster. As far as this current run that they're doing, listen, Violet by design has been serving the function of being the heel army for Jake something to run through. And so uh, eliminating Eric Young from that. <clears throat> and, and by the way, you know, Impact takes so, tapes so far in advance that we don't know when we're going to get to that point in the story. So, you know, we'll, we'll see. I think that um, Violent by Design can still serve the purpose that they're serving now, even without Eric Young. We just won't be able to get any good promos. Right. You know, those have to continue, you know, uh, being being a threat, being, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A foil to Jake something and let him just continue, you know, to run through those guys, run through those guys, run through those guys until eventually he ends up with something else to do. And I think that's fine because Jake is a guy who just needs to look strong, right? Like, you know, the famous CM Punk podcast, make Roman look strong, right? Right. Just make Jake look strong. Like, you know what I mean? No matter what, <laughs> let's just keep making Jake look strong. And I think that's the function that that group serves right now. So that's fine. You added Rhino. You got another big bruising guy. You got Joe Doring. That's a big bruising guy. And you got, Diener, he's there and so uh so yeah man you know what i mean like you know i think they're fine I, I won't say by losing eric young you certainly lose the ability to cut effective promos but also as a as a producer i can say the fact that they've you they've 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 most of their promos have been pre-packaged stuff you know with lots of cuts and you know basically eric young doing voiceovers yeah. You can get another person to do that because now you're going to have the ability to cut, let's do another take, cut, let's do another take, right? And so you can, maybe you can pull a good promo out of Cody Diener or out of, uh, you know, I haven't heard Joe Doring talk, but, uh, you know, I don't maybe, want to. maybe, I think Rhino ran for public office so he can talk. Yeah, you know, yeah. in some capacity, he can bullshit us. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think you can figure it out. I think you can figure it out. But you know, Eric Young will be missed, and um, but you know, look, the show must go on. So it is what it is. They'll find a way to get around it. And I think this is just an opportunity for some some slick producing. And uh, you know, let's see what we can come up with. Yeah, they don't necessarily have to cut promos, and and there's probably, I mean, there's some pre tape. You you would imagine they could do some pre taped stuff with Eric Young and they, they could probably work something out, but you're right. They don't, they don't have to be talking and cutting promos every week. And we've kind of been getting to that point with impact a little bit that I think for a long time they were good about was, um, I mean, I always said this about WWE. Why does everyone have to talk? Everyone, right. everyone, why does everyone have to be on a mic at some point? Like that was one good thing about impact for a long time. And I feel like we're kind of going that direction a little that they keep everyone, everyone's talking during the episode it might not be with a mic in front of you, but it's it's backstage. It's, you know, some, sometimes you have to find what, what's this person's strength? Is it telling a story with their mouth or in the ring? You know what I mean? And let them kind of yeah. stick to that. So I, I, I don't want to hear, you know, oh, okay, now Rhino's the one talk. Like, I don't like, I, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see. But I, I don't think they're going to add a new member or a new leader or anything like that. We can't even get knockouts and stuff, so I, I don't think they're going to... Yeah, and honestly, I don't think it's necessary. <clears throat> I don't think it's necessary. Like I said, 
you got to think of what purpose that group is serving right now on the show, right? Like this isn't the NWO. This isn't like the main event feature attraction yeah. of the show. The purpose that they're serving right now is to be a gang of goons. Um, and right now they're serving as the, uh, the obstacle that Jake something has to overcome in order for us to see him, you know, in a more prominent singles role. So it's actually, you know, they serve a great function and they don't need Eric Young to serve that purpose. So I think they'll still be fine. They can still keep doing the exact same thing they're doing. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. So we'll see what they do, but I believe they're Eric Young's. They say he got hurt in the match with storm, but I think I also read that he did the whole set of tapings. So maybe he just wasn't wrestling. You know what I mean? But he's clearly not going to do the pay-per-view. Yeah. I don't know what the plan was for violent by design, but I don't think I don't think that we're just going to get the remaining three members versus Jake and I don't even know who the hell they've been partnering him up with. I don't think. Uh, oh, Storm and Saban. I don't think I don't think okay. it's going to be yep, that yep. match. I mean, I feel like we've already seen it. Maybe we have. Maybe we haven't. I feel like we have, but but they still would have three on three if they want to do that. I think they'll be fine. Yeah, they 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 can probably figure something out. Let, let's talk about some of the other news. Uh, this was stuff that happened last week and uh we're gonna get our chance to talk about it right now so what's the first thing that we're going to wrap about <clears throat> so one of the big news that came out last week one of the big news items that came out last week was that impact rebellion has been moved to sunday april 25th from its original date of saturday april 24th is this cool or not cool and what do you think is the significance of this change I guess it's both cool and not cool. Um, it's cool because it, it was a smart move. I think it was silly to, to begin with. To, to I think it was running up against UFC. And I believe there was one other event going on that day. I don't remember what it is at the moment. I think it was silly to begin with to do that. But it's not cool in the sense that it's not a good look to change, <laughs> to change a pay-per-view date. And change it around the same time that you're announcing your, your changing impact the the day that's airing and we'll, we'll talk about that some more here in a little bit but it just kind of makes it look like they're running from the competition which they are don't get me wrong let me not word it like that not running from the competition but they they know it's best for business for them to move they mm -hmm. they know it's not in their best interest to go up against nxt they did that once or twice this year and the ratings were pretty bad for that. So, uh, you know, it's, it's smart not to do that. And unfortunately they're probably going to be doing that for years because, um, WWE has done that every couple of years. They have bounced SmackDown around. They've bounced NXT around. So it, it's probably going to happen again. And at one point they're probably going to move back to Tuesday, but, um, just as far as the significance, I mean, it's, it's just necessary that, as I said, they just, they know they know where their place is. They know that it's it's best to go unopposed. And there hasn't been wrestling on Thursday in a while. Mm -hmm. I don't know when and it, when it was. I don't know when MLW airs. I mean, I know it's on YouTube. It doesn't do that many views from what I've seen. But um, I don't know. I don't watch it because I haven't really enjoyed it the couple times I've watched it. But it's wrestling. There's been no wrestling on Thursday. People have been asking for a while. Like I want to get. I, I mean, I'm not one of those people, but. Let's let's let's, let's stick with let's Monday, stick with the Impact Monday, Rebellion Monday. for now, and then let's come oh my back. God. To yeah, the, yeah, to dude. I'm sorry. Show. Like I'm getting on this. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's stick with the Impact here. Rebellion. So I think like there could be some uh some. I think there could be some reasoning. I forgot what we were talking about. I'm so sorry. That? No, it's okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's cool. But no, I mean, but it's, it's cool that you're hot on you're hot on the <laughs> the show moving. Uh, you know what I mean? You know, calm down, killer. We're gonna get <laughs> we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. But yeah. We gotta, so. But but for now, I want to know. If you think there's a reason for moving rebellion specifically. Okay, no. Um again, I'm really sorry about that. Um I, I would I would say it probably has to do with the UFC stuff. I'm sure that plays a role. I think it, it if if it were a normal pay-per-view, like let's just say Rebellion last year. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't think they would have done it. I don't think they even though, yeah, some people are going to check out UFC. I don't think they're that, oh, UFC is going to take half of our audience. I don't think they're that, that concern. But if Kenny Omega wasn't on the card, right? they felt the potential was there to get more views um, and more buys because he's on it. 
then that, I can see where they're like, okay, we need to go unopposed when we put this out. So yeah. I think it, it all boils down to Kenny Omega and that's it. I don't think it has, again, if this were rebellion last year, if it were slam anniversary last year, I don't think they would, they would move it. Yeah. So me personally, I like the idea of impact pay-per-views being on Saturdays. I, you know, to me, it's just one more thing to make them different from the WWE kind of differentiates their product a little bit. Like, Hey, you know, their pay-per-views are traditionally on Sundays. Ours are going to be on Saturdays. And that would be another thing that would just make our product look and appear different for the fan. And by the way, if you run up on uh, a weekend where WWE is doing a pay-per-view on the same weekend, you don't make fans have to choose, right? Which is something you never want to do if you're Impact Wrestling. Yeah. Um, now, I'm curious if the motivation to make this move was due to the fact that this is the same weekend of the NFL draft. Uh, okay. I mean, but they can't be running away from a battle against the fourth through sixth rounds of the draft. I mean, I, you can't be that insecure about your product. Um, I, I think, you know, I, I think they, they, they want to put the show where people are used to looking for shows. So Sunday has traditionally become wrestling pay-per-view night. And that must be something they think will give them a significant bump in viewership. Like they just think that people are just going to be more likely to be a chunk of people there looking for a wrestling pay-per-view on a Sunday. I think that's just the, you know, the best thing. Now, my other thought is that impact management has something big planned for this show. And for that reason, they want to put this show in a place where people will see it and talk about it and the news will flow right into the Monday traffic. So right. I'm going to say this is cool. Yeah, because it's, let's say, I mean, you you work at ESPN, dude. There's times where something hot happens on a Friday or a Saturday. It could be a big trade and nothing drops on in the news until Monday. You know, there, there's times where, you know, they... Stephen A. Smith has a little background in his home and he talks on something for the most part, it, 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 it doesn't hit, doesn't hit hard the next day on the news outlets. You know, I've, I've caught that with sports. So yeah, yeah. So you, you probably want that. That's called a news dump when you dump. release your starting quarterback on Friday, because <laughs> you, because you got the, you got the weekend coming up and remember, you released your starting quarterback at three o'clock on a Friday because uh, the, the weekend news cycle is already starting and you're basically trying to get away from it. You know what I mean? If that's on Monday, there's, you know, no sports coming up or anything. The yeah. news week is just starting. You're going to be right. the head story. But if you, if it's something you don't want to be a big headline, you dump it midday on Friday and you hope that it gets lost in the wash for between now and Monday. So knowledge, drop a term for you. News dropping dump. knowledge on people. I hope they're not running from the, late rounds of the NFL draft. Even last year, Roger Goodell didn't want to be there. Like he was calling the fourth and sixth round. Like, like at first, you know, he's very like proud and just like with the first pick of the, you know, and it gets those right. He's in a seated position, just like the uh, Cincinnati Bengals, you know, like you could just see he didn't even want to be there. So um, uh, I, I like how he did it. Total sidebar. But last year, I actually like the virtual draft from everybody's homes. I kind of like that. It was fun, yeah. I thought, and it, like now they're rushing back to do. They're doing the draft in Cleveland this year, bringing people back to the show. And I'm like, is that necessary, really? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, well, like why do we have to to have people at the draft? Like, why is that something we got to do right now? Oh, I, I don't know. People are trying to get back to some some degree of normalcy. Only wrestling isn't. Only wrestling is like yes, not but the out. NFL drafts. Yeah. That's not yeah. like, you know, priorities. That's yeah, yeah. Way down. <laughs> and the NBA did it like that this this year, and I didn't like it. They was the NFLs was just it came off better. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. um, uh, so the uh, so the other newsworthy story around Impact uh last week was that the Impact ratings had dipped, even with an advertised appearance by Kenny by God Omega. Now, would you say this is cool or not cool? Not cool, not cool. Um, I've said this before. There was no real payoff when Kenny Omega showed up on the episode once that one time. He showed up, you, you know, 
there was 10,000 extra people on Twitch. There was almost 100,000 extra viewers and, you know, more YouTube hits on the highlights and all that. So you had all these eyes. And although I, I kind of enjoyed the segment just because I thought, I mean, I, I thought it was cool that he was on Impact, you know, mm-hmm. I enjoyed the segment. He was talking in circles for 10 minutes. He right. said at one point, so why am I here? Why am I in Impact Wrestling? And he didn't <laughs> answer his own question. <laughs> Like we were wondering that ourselves, Kenny. Right. So, so a lot of people are just they they ended that segment with um okay Kenny's gonna be back next week and it was just like dude he didn't say anything last time yeah so I thought there wasn't enough of a payoff for people to come back and then throughout the coming weeks it, it's kind dude it's kind of like watching AEW and every week they're like this week we hear from Sting. Yeah. <laughs> that means nothing anymore, dude. Nothing. They ran that into the ground real yeah, quick. Yeah, they haven't let that Sting breathe for even a week. I didn't think he was going to show up on this last week's episode, and they found right. a way to him come out. Like, they beat it into the ground. It means nothing now. Yeah. So that's where it's it's a good comp- you know comparison and for me because they just kept, oh, we're going to hear again from Kenny, and he's still sitting in the bus. It's mm-hmm. it's It's the same crap. It's uh, attacking Swan and all that. You know, like, it was the same stuff. Nothing was really progressing. And I understand they were like, we don't want to give you too much. But they weren't giving people enough to be like, okay, I'm going to see what's next. There wasn't that, that, like, cliffhanger, you know. Um, Yeah. I'm watching, uh, re-watching the Arrow season right now with my girlfriend. Okay. Dude, every episode, just they hit you with something at the end, dude. You're like, dude, let's, 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 let's watch another one. Yeah, or, uh, right. <laughs> or like we watch uh, Star, which is kind of like Empire. Nice. You know, um, that's off the air too, but we're we're starting that over. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, you got to be, I was like, I was telling her, dude, every, every episode is going to hit you with something, a cliffhanger at the end. And it was like, we just weren't getting that with the Kenny Omega stuff. It was just. Yeah. Did you guys, did you watch Empire all the way through? Did you finish Empire? No. Okay. Well, she did. <laughs> My girl did. I, I didn't. You, you tuned out. At what, at what point did you tap out? Dude, I don't know, man. I, I don't. It's uh, it's just a lot of shows that I try to try to follow. I, I didn't yeah. get deep enough into it to be like, oh, let's keep going. So maybe, maybe, maybe here soon. I'll... I, I enjoyed Empire. Um, I made it almost all the way. As a matter of fact, I may still go finish it. But I made it like, I think there's five total seasons. Yeah. I made it to like season four five in like the first episode and when lucia showed up with dreads i was like man this is weird <laughs> it was just right. weird. like you know terrence howard with this he had this dreadlock wig and it just it just the whole thing looked weird man. he's never been able to pull that look up uh, yeah i don't know no, no. but um you know i don't know it was there was one season where um they did remember the movie misery no Oh, uh, you know. So this this is movie called Misery about this lady, this obsessed fan, who uh, who finds her favorite writer, her favorite author, uh, and get, he gets in like a car crash, and she finds him on the side of the road, like unconscious, and she takes him to her house to like revive him back to health or whatever. But he wakes up and he's like chained to the bed and he can't leave. It's like it's a movie. It's a Stephen King book um but okay. they, they did a whole season like based off of that but it was like um in the in in the movie misery uh it was god what's this lady's name kathy bates was like the the crazy lady the crazy i think fan. i remember the, the artwork for the for misery yeah but in this one it was demi moore okay. demi moore was like a crazy doctor and demi moore is she's gotta be like 60 but she's still fine yeah oh yeah it's crazy <laughs> but uh, anyway, where, where were we at in this? <laughs> well, I was just kind of talking about some of these shows and they hit you with those cliffhangers and those reasons. Yeah. So I, I, I feel behind on Legends of Tomorrow. It, the, right. new epi- the new season starts in a couple months. So I was like, dude, let me watch the last like five episodes from last season. I never watched. I've been watching that the last couple of nights. And the episode, end of the episode comes and you're always like, oh, crap. I want to watch the next one, too. Like there just wasn't that with the Kenny Omega stuff. And it lost his luster like really, really quick. There wasn't enough to like, mm. yeah. And also, what what didn't what didn't help was that uh, you know I'm gonna go on my Josh Josh Matthews comp- rant real quick. But when all these new people were watching the show, like dude, there was a lot of people 
just yeah. oh my god dude i can't i forgot how much i can't stand him on commentary <laughs> like, you know, god, how much i hate this guy so i would have i would have you know had striker in place by then personally but it's whatever but uh also when we were watching the episodes i mean every you know how, how often was josh matthews like kenny omega the AEW world champion team up with the good brothers versus the motor city machine guns and the impact world Ch i mean this long spiel over and over and over and then i even right. said one time on a podcast that he name dropped kenny omega seven times during the main event wow. of that particular episode of impact that had nothing to do with kenny omega seven yeah. times i counted i was like dude i'm gonna count seven times so there was a lot of overkill i go back to what i'm saying we're gonna hear from sting like what's he gonna say this week that he didn't say last week nothing right you know so i think there was a lot of intrigue i just don't think they hit us with enough like let's hit him with some cliffhangers let's leave him with something like when you just just beating down rich swan and the motor city machine guns every every week like it would dude it would have been so different if swan and the guns would have showed up on an episode of dynamite just once right and, and bounce from one show to the other yeah. and have people you know what i mean yeah that's why people tuned in for impact that one time was because they bounced them off dynamite <clears throat> like you it's got to be a ping pong effect. You can't just okay. We got him here once. We're gonna keep him here. It doesn't work. You that know way. what? So I, I got I got I got to give you credit on this one uh, because I, you know, I've been telling people throughout this whole thing that that they're, that they're just looking at it wrong. Like that, that um, you know, people want this to be you know uh, an invasion angle or like a or like a, a company warfare type angle, but that's not exactly what they're doing, and people are just looking at it the wrong way. And while I still think that's true, I think you also got to understand that sometimes people will tell you what they want to see. And so while people may be looking at it wrong, they're also telling you what they want to see. Like they're telling you they want to see the best of impact go against the best of AEW. They want to see, you know, uh, the, the, the impact uh women's champion go against the AEW women's champion like people are telling you that's what they want to see they don't like you know it's, it's like Kenny Omega's great yeah people people think Kenny Omega's great but if you're going to do the the dream match of of the AEW world champ versus the Impact world champ they want the story of strong champ versus strong champ not Kenny Omega is bullying Impact so he can you know, get his Kenny Omega shine on, you yeah. know? Um, and that's basically what the story's been. And it's causing people to tune out. You know what I mean? It's causing people to tune out. And so I think that's why, you know, we're seeing the, um, you know, what the, the low, the low rating, but I think it's also important to, um, it's important to, to, to have context here, right? Like, so the headline was Impact drew its lowest rating of the year with a Kenny Omega appearance, but it was still in the hundred thousands. It wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like uh, yeah. in the 70,000s, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, so a little bit of perspective is necessary when talking about that. Um, so, yeah, you know, I, but I would say, listen, I, I, has this thing jumped the shark? You know, is the... Is the is the bloom off the rose for this Kenny Omega Impact relationship partnership thing? I I don't know. I would say that people, it's certainly not you know a must see event the way it was, right? Like I think that's clear. I don't think that's even debatable at this point. Right. So um you know the question now would be how do you get the intrigue back, right? What do you got to do to get the intrigue back? And I think you know I think the answer is the Impact's got to start having some get back. You know what I mean? Like, I think, I think that, um, you know, if this is going to be a thing where, you know, maybe we're not setting up a war games match of impact versus AEW, but maybe there needs to at least be, like I said, you know, maybe Deanna Perazzo needs to show up and put Britt Baker in an arm bar, you know, yeah, maybe, yeah. um, you know, uh, may, maybe Chris Bay needs to show up and kick somebody in the face. You know what I mean? Like maybe Moose needs to show up and spear Brian Cage. You know, so I, I think that people are getting a little annoyed at the idea of AEW just coming in and bullying Impact. And I think that even though 
even though the Good Brothers have been showing up on AEW a lot, it's kind of it kind of hasn't felt like they're there to to represent Impact Wrestling right, right. the way that Kenny Omega is in Impact to represent AEW. So, yeah, you know, I think the answer is that you know you got to give people what they want to see, and what people want to see is they want to see some real you know brand on brand competition, which Omega versus Swan is. But it's like, uh, uh, it's tough to explain. People want, they want more. They want more. Yeah. It doesn't feel the good brothers, like as if Eddie Edwards were to show up in AEW. Like, you know, that dude's right. like waving the flag for impact. You know what I mean? Yes. It's exactly. like, it's like saying, God, what's an NBA trade that just happened? Uh, uh, I'll just say, dude, it's like Andre Drummond showing up to a, a a media event to represent for the Los Angeles Lakers, dude. Like, right. that dude hasn't even put on a jersey yet. You know what right. I mean? Not a <laughs> yeah. representation of the franchise. You know, like right. guys yeah. just showed up. You know, they're not waving that flag, right? In fact, and then I think there's confusion too with like Don. I, I was always confused with him on commentary, and I used to point that out a lot. It's like, dude, I don't know what his mission is. Like, I don't know what he's trying to. Yeah, to do on commentary like is he good is he bad like like i don't right. i don't get it he's always like oh these piece of crap a, a, ove and then ove's in the announce booth next week and he's like hey right. you know, like i just I'm like i don't get you dude and that's i i'm seeing that on the screen too i'm like why is he this is the real world champion like you call him champ like i, I don't get that dude i just don't and i think that i think there's confusion too and there's just no you know like if with the Monday Night War, I mean, not the Monday Night Wars, but I guess the invasion angle. I'm, I'm going to say invasion for lack of a better term, but there was there was that like we got to tune in because we don't know who's going to pop up that we weren't expecting. You know what I mean? Yeah. We don't have that. That's mm -hmm. I think if there was a degree of that, it doesn't have to be an invasion thing, but if yeah. there was a degree of who's going to pop up, who's going to show up, it'd be different. But we've it's been made clear to everyone. Okay, this is um the good they just have interest in the good brothers they don't even want any yeah. of our champions on their show and i think that's what it comes down to is that it doesn't feel equal it doesn't feel like we know the kenny omega rich swan thing is going on we know the good breggers good breggers the good brothers are part of kenny omega's story but i think again it doesn't really feel like impact really is getting their 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 licks in. You know what I mean? Doesn't, yeah. It doesn't feel like Impact's getting their licks in on this. So, uh, so yeah, you know, I think if they want to fix it, they're gonna have to ch start making look like making Impact look like they're putting up a fight here. Did the I I you know I actually didn't watch the episode of Dynamite. Did the Good Brothers beat Moxley and Eddie Kingston? I don't think. Oh, I'm I'm gonna assume they probably didn't, but. Yeah, Moxley's like they're seeing him, man. They yeah, they, they love Moxley. Yeah. I'm gonna assume they didn't win. So it's like we're you know, there's no just no momentum from the impact side, I think. Yeah. So no. there's just not there's nothing. I think if um Sammy Guevara would have showed up like it was originally planned, I think I know that has nothing to do with Kenny Omega, but at least that would have just been like, Oh, we're you know, we got private party, now we're getting this guy, who are we gonna get? The right. next set of tapings. Like, I don't think anyone's going into this new set of tapings. Like, who's going to show from AEW? Like, everyone's assuming it's going to be nobody. So, right. You know, there's just not that excitement. Yeah. So we'll see. But something definitely needs to change. I think we can all kind of agree about that. Um, now, here's speaking of change. Uh, you kind of touched on this earlier, <laughs> and I had to reel you back in. I'm coming in hot. Sorry, but uh. Impact recently announced that they're going to be moving the weekly show, the weekly flagship show, Impact Wrestling, from Tuesday nights to Thursdays. Thursday, where it was all those years on Spike TV, Impact is now going back to Thursdays. Is this cool or not cool? Okay, so I'm probably going to repeat a little bit what what I said earlier. But again, that's going to be a little bit of both. I don't think moving... It's one thing to move when you control your own destiny. Like if, if WWE is like, hey, we're going to move SmackDown to Tuesday. They're not running from nothing, you know, like they're just right. like, hey, we're just going to move it. You know, we can do that. It's not really a bad look for them. 
impact in the last several years has been jumping all over the place. But it's good to be on Thursdays because there's more plus, you know, plus seven plus or it's not plus seven. What are the DVR numbers? Uh, plus three, three and and is it plus five? Plus three, three and five. You those those numbers are better on the weekend because I mean on Thursdays because more people are 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 likely to be like, okay, I'm gonna watch this weekend when I'm not doing anything. On Tuesday right now, it's rare that I watch the show when it airs. But then with Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and I have stuff and I've got appointments and stuff like there's a lot of times I just don't get around to it until the weekend. And it, yeah. sometimes it hurts our you know podcasting ability, but it's just sometimes it, that's just that's just the case. Yeah. So for the sake of our show, I'm actually kind of <laughs> glad it's moving to Thursday because I feel totally like, agree with that. Um, back when it was on Thursdays, it was really a lot easier for me to podcast. So um, it, the point I was making before you stopped me earlier, because I was coming in hot talking about the wrong topic was that people have been asking and I'm not one of those people that have been wanting wrestling from Monday through Friday for a long time. Right. And I don't think we've necessarily had that. I, I'm pretty sure we, I think we've like for what, for the most part, one day has always been open. Mm. So this is their opportunity to just slide right in. And it's cool because they don't have to worry about NWA beforehand because, you know, there's going to be people who watch NWA and then impact rolls on. It's like, ah, I don't really feel like, continuing to watch wrestling right you know? and also aw dark is on tuesdays which i think might come out the same time impact does i think aw dark is at seven Don't okay quote me on that though. all right it's still competition right. it's on youtube granted nwa doesn't always have it doesn't have like aw's viewership speaking of which people say i kiss nwa's ass like this episode they're return episode fucking stunk did it really and the pay-per-view wasn't good either they oh. do the audio levels are all over the place oh um, I'm, I'm going this little rant here so you guys know I don't, I don't just praise everything they do audio levels all over the place the microphone's really cheap so the guy that the, the guy that used to do the ring announcing on he was like perfect for them they have this other guy he mm -hmm. just talks real loud into the microphone for no reason and just like <laughs> it's just like distortion and then the play-by announcer, Joe, Joe Gal, he's much louder than Tim Storm. He's okay. Like, Holy hell, it's over And then just like, yeah, I just think that uh, it, you know, <laughs> this is going to happen. And then on the episode of Power, they debuted Velvet Sky as the third third uh, play-by-play. Or uh, third, oh, the really? second color commentator, but the third person in the booth. Uh, Dude, I like Velvet Sky, man. But she, and, and, and granted, I can't judge her off one episode, but she added absolutely nothing to it. And she was also just as quiet as Tim Storm. So it's like the audio levels here all over the place. Then they got this May Valentine girl that, dude, I think Gia, Gia Miller's not the best interviewer in the world, dude, but this girl stinks. <laughs> she's hot, but she's horrible. <laughs> Very rough to get through the episode. Anyway, now that's all my chest. Granted, they're not going to have the most viewer, viewers in the world, but AW Dark is going to. They're always half a million or whatever on YouTube. So it's still competition for them, Yeah, whether it's on YouTube or it's on television. For me, it doesn't matter if it's on YouTube or television because I, I have a Fire Stick and Roku and I use YouTube TV and all that crap. Like It's it's all on my TV regardless. It doesn't yeah. matter how what app I use to pull it up. So it's good because it gives them opportunity where there's no excuses like Thursday. It's your day. Who knows how long? They're probably gonna a year from now when WWE decides to switch things around, then they'll probably move again. But right now, it's a good thing. Yeah. So I actually like Thursday as a wrestling night. Um, it, it, you know, it's close towards the end of the week, like you talked about, and you know, it's the day I originally remember watching TNA. You know, when I first got into it. So you know, I like the idea of the show being on Thursdays. Plus, I don't. There's nothing else I really watch on that night. I mean, even during football season, the Thursday night games are usually terrible. So, <laughs> Dude, especially this year. Yeah, so, I mean, I would definitely still be watching wrestling anyway. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, but here's the thing. The fact that they keep moving nights to get away from competition, it just doesn't look good, man. Like, you guys are not giving your fans a whole lot to feel confident about. You know what I mean? Like, you know, 
AEW fans are going to watch the product no matter where it goes. And the diehard Impact fans, I guess that'd be us, you know, we're going to watch no matter what. Um, but the fact you keep, you know, you're moving your your product because we, we all heard that, you know, USA is going to move NXT to Tuesdays. You know, I, I, listen, honestly, it's smart because you will get slaughtered going up against NXT. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying, the fact that you keep running from competition is just not a good look. But the fact that you've landed on Thursdays kind of is a good look. Um, but ultimately, it looks weak. So if I had to say this was cool or not cool, I'm going to say this was just not cool. Um, not cool, but uh, I'm actually looking forward to watching it on Thursdays. Yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's cool and not cool, okay? It's both. That's, it's both. That's, right. That's what I said at the top. I was like, it's both. <laughs> um, God, there was something I was going to say on top of all that. And I don't remember what it is. Well, if you didn't have anything else to say about that, you know what I think you would have something else to say about? What's that? Some of the comments on the YouTube video. I told you, I told you guys out there in the internet that we were going to get back to commenting on your comments uh, on YouTube shows. And we're glad we appreciate each and every listener slash viewer of the show. And we thank you guys for submitting your comments. So now is your time to shine. So. BQ, you ready? I'm ready. All right. So let's see here. Lee, Impact Wrestling supporter, says, I can't wait to see Kylie Ray back in Impact Wrestling as soon as her mental health is all good. We basically covered that on the show uh, last week, and we totally agree with you, man. You know, we want her to get her personal stuff in order, and we can't wait to see her back. They sure could use her. Anything to add to that? Yeah, I, I hope the day comes because they just really haven't been able to, to replace her. I know, you know, we're not going to talk spoilers here. They're bringing back someone else for this set of tapings. It's Oh, do you already know who it is? Yeah, I do. Uh -huh. I think most people do. But, you know, it's kind of same old, same old. Like, we're, we're kind of look, we, we rather look towards the future a little bit. Um, you know, NWA did uh, bring in Taryn Terrell, which uh -huh. I just popped, popped huge for when I saw her on the screen. I'm like... Why can't Impact and bring her back? You're going to bring all these girls from the past, like bring Taryn Terrell. What the hell? But, <laughs> you know, that, that's just me being selfish. I know they have nothing for her to do. But yeah, um, but yeah no. All right. They you, haven't been able to tell, replace her. You, so you tell me uh, offline who the who the, who the the <laughs> surprise was that they brought back. Okay. Um. All right. So let's see what else we got here. Oh, RHS Video says, I feel that Omega wins and starts defending the Impact title on AEW against Impact wrestlers. That puts more eyes on the product. What do you think about that? You know, I have. I'm going to be consistent in saying I think Rich Swan's going to win the match. I understand there's like a one percent chance of that happening, but I'm I'm going to be consistent with what I think is going to happen. I don't. I don't see him defending the Impact title on their show. I just I just don't. They've already said he's not going to defend it. He's not going to be a part of the Impact shows going forward. I mean, everything could change. That's They could have had a meeting today saying he's going to be on the Impact shows going forward. Who knows? But yeah, I just don't think um, the Impact title means a whole lot to AEW. I think it's a storyline with Kenny Omega to collect some belts. But I don't think it's... They're not giving it that prestige that the NWA women's title has on their show. Yeah, totally agree. Totally you know, agree. So I, I don't see, I see if Kenny has it, I see it more of a prop, unfortunately, which I think that's where a lot of people are really afraid of too, is if he holds a title, how is he going to treat it? What's what, you know, is he going to feel like, hey, this is a world title or this is just, you know, he's going to pull Medusa Plus, and drop it in the trash, you know? So, you know, I, I'm glad you used the reference of, uh, of Thunder Rosa uh, and her defending the, NWA World Women's Championship on on uh, AEW, and to me, I would hate to see the Impact World Championship reduced to being a, 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 a filler segment on AEW Dynamite. You know, I think that mm -hmm. that would just, you know, that would just be the pits of the pits for you know how far Impact Wrestling has fallen 
to have the Impact World title be reduced to, you know, like I said, segment filler on AEW. I think that's just, that's not what you want. Dixie Carter will be spinning in her grave. Yeah, <laughs> if she was dead. <laughs> um, all right. <clears throat> so Turup28 says, if Rich Swan actually wins this match, and he says, I don't think he will, I want an immediate markout video from BQ. Once again, Impact just needs to sign more knockouts. If Kylie Ray does come back, she should not get an immediate title shot. They need to see if she can stick it out for the long term. And since Ace Austin had to become a number one contender twice, he should get a pretty lengthy title run until Impact brings in new talent. So a lot to unpack there, BQ. But what do you got? I don't know if I'm going to do a markout video because I don't really consider myself much of a, a mark for many people, but I will definitely have a reaction video where I was like, I told y'all, not not I told y'all, like I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not saying he's going to win. I, let me not have those words put in my mouth, but I'm staying steadfast in my my prediction that he's going to win. I'm, I'm very aware that I probably will be wrong, but I'm going to be consistent with it. But I will I will let y'all know, like, hey, I said he I, this was my pick. You know, like people are gonna know I didn't flip flop on that stuff. Nothing. I did so order. You're definitely gonna have words though. You I did have bars for the haters. Oh, dude, I'm I'm gonna kill it. And <laughs> I ordered a Rich Swan shirt. I ordered the the Rich Swan Impact World Champion shirt, and I will I will wear that in the video. Yeah. And everything. I don't get a lot of Impact shirts, man. Like like you see, I got this Burt Baker one on right now. Mm -hmm. Like most of the shirts I get are like from AEW because I like the shirts better. Plus, I like pro wrestling tees because I like the 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 I, I pay up for the material or whatever. Okay. Where the ones you buy in Shop Impact, I'm not big on the how the the shirts feel, uh -huh. or the way they shrink or or whatever. Like I'm just I'm just not really big on them. Plus, yeah. I don't really like the designs that much, dude. I, I really would like to see them step up their merch because I want yeah. to buy more shirts. But I, I go on Shop Impact, dude. I just don't want any of these. Like. Yeah, so kind of like boils down to, but I did buy the Rich Swan one. I bought a Tennille Dashwood shirt, but that was off her pro wrestling tees. But um, did you like lose a bet? Is that why you got the Tennille Dashwood shirt? <laughs> no, dude. Once they made her heel, and she she was the influencer gimmick that I've been screaming for forever, dude. I'm I was I'm like Team Tennille. Like, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm gonna rock that. Uh, there was one point where I wanted her out of the company it was so bad, but but <laughs> once she uh, switched the gimmick, I, I was all for it. But but no, I, I will definitely have a rock the Rich Swan shirt. What was what was some of the other stuff in there? Oh God. Um let's see. He says if Kylie Ray does come back, she should not get an immediate title shot. No, agreed, agreed. agreed. Okay. Uh he said since Ace Austin had to become number one contender twice, he should get a pretty lengthy title run. I hope so. You know, they, they did that rematch with TJP. I had no interest in watching it right away. Like, it's not that I'm not willing to watch the same people fight again. That's not what it is. Because any wrestling company, it's very difficult to always put on fresh matches. But you have to, like, you have to space it out. Like, if they made us wait that long for Ace to even fight TJP to begin with, and then they were just like, okay, two weeks later, they're going to do it again. Like, you might as well just drag it out again. I just don't like seeing it so quick. I don't feel, you know, I talked about last week when I, when I went into a period of time where I stopped covering, where I stopped doing videos and podcasts because I was so burnt out with my home life. The other thing was the episodes of impact at the time. I stopped watching the show for about three or four months because it was groundhog day. Like every time I turned it on, it was killer cross and moose versus Johnny impact or Brian cage, or it was, Killer Cross and Moose, right. or Killer Cross versus Moose versus Brian Impact versus, <laughs> yeah. I mean Johnny Impact versus Brian Cage, or I mean it was some kind of combination of that every single week, dude. It was Groundhog Day. I was like, dude, all these episodes feel exactly the same, you know. And right. then whoever Tessa was beefing with at the time was just the same. I was like, dude, um, so I had to take take a big break from it. But mm -hmm. why did I get into that? What was the point? I was not sure, but. <laughs> Metal Lucha King Lewis says, uh, with the AEW partnership, 
they need to have Eva Lise and Diamante challenge Fire and Flavor. What do you think about that? I've been saying that from from day one when they when this Impact and AEW thing came out, and I I did a little. Here's my I hate using that term dream match. Um, here's my <laughs> my card it's a dream match anywhere in Ohio. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hate, dude. What was the one they hit us with about three weeks ago? We got a dream match. Oh, Jazz versus Deanna Perrazzo. Oh man, yeah. I was like, do you realize a dream match is like Shawn Michaels versus AJ Styles, <laughs> right. like something that would never happen? You know, it's a I dream just, match on the fifth night of WrestleCon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but I put together some matches. Like, dude, I would like to see this. These are the matches I like to see if they were to do some kind of crossover, and that that's one that I'm from day one and be like, dude, we have to see that those girls aren't doing anything on, on dynamite. Like they're, they, they only wrestle on dark. They haven't right. wrestled on dynamite in a long time. Um, I, I, Diamante had a single match the other day on, on AEW dark. And I was like, dude, I haven't seen them. And it just hit me. I was like, I haven't seen them on screen in a while. They're, they're perfect. 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 Diamante is probably already at the tapings. I, I could be wrong about that. She's probably not there consistently, but I, it wouldn't surprise me if she didn't travel with her over there. Right. Welcome in the company. You know, I think it's perfect. It storyline makes sense because they won the women's tournament. They won a women's tournament. It mm -hmm. makes perfect effing sense. Actually, it does make sense. So, you know, I I would have rather probably if I was just like fantasy booking, probably would rather like take Conte, take Conte and Anna J do it, but Anna mm -hmm. J's hurt, so. That's the only team that's available that impact that AW has that's doing nothing. So yeah, they need um it. yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think uh Metal Lucha King Lewitt, that was actually a pretty good idea. I don't know why you need to see the the blacks and the Latinos going to war with each other, yeah. but you know, it's just uh we're trying to show black and Latino unity on this show here, <laughs> but, uh, you yeah. know, you just want to see us all take each other out, man. Like, you know, what's your real motivations? Okay, no. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I actually do think that'd be a, a really good, a really good, uh, pairing, you know, for all the reasons BQ mentioned right there. Um, all right, let's see if we can find one more good one. Let's see. Bum, 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 bum. While you're while you're looking, um, uh, Aaron Comer he had said, "Can you guys that pay for Impact Plus let let me know something? I've been seeing commercials lately on Plus before watching Impact. I'm not logged in." He's basically asking why there's he's seeing commercials when he's when they're, we're being charged for Impact Plus. Um, I don't. I don't know, Playboy. I stopped paying for Impact Plus a long time ago, and since they made it for you know, they made a nice little free version that's consumable, and they put the 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 weekly show up there every week. That's all I need. I pay for it, but I can't say I I use that app a whole lot because just like I say with the YouTube, there's no value for me on there. There's no there's not a lot of value for me on Impact Plus. I I'm going to assume yeah. that they run ads. And that's it doesn't matter if you pay or, or, or don't pay for it. Like, so, for instance, I pay for Hulu, but I still get ads. Yeah. You know, um, there's a Hulu version where I could, you know, I can pay up and not get ads. But, you know, Impact right. Plus doesn't offer that. So I'm going to assume that because they have a free app, you know, the one that you obviously use, mm -hmm. they're going to have to make some money another way. So, you know, they run the run ads. I think that's probably not going away. I'm sure yeah. they're not like long drawn out commercials. Also, are you sure you're not talking about Twitch? That sounds like Twitch. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah, Twitch definitely does it. <laughs> you might be confused. Yeah. Um, so we got a couple of comments towards the end. The 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 Tessa thing says. Tessa versus Deanna would be money and it might give the knockout division the lift it needs. Deanna, Kiera, and Tasha literally have no challengers and Tanil still needs a partner. Uh, says they're waiting for D Zelina Vega's 90 days to finish before bringing her in. Well, as a question, are they waiting for Zelina, D Zelina Vega's 90 days to finish before bringing her in? Uh, could they sign AOP and the Ascension to boost the tag division? Um, all right, just a lot, a, a lot to unpack there. 
So first, you want to tackle his question about. Uh, so basically, he agreed that Tesla versus Deion will be a big money match. And then I think the question is, do you think they're waiting for Zelia, Zelina Vega, Thea Trinidad, waiting for her 90-day non-compete to finish with WWE before they sign her? Do you think that's what they're doing? And also, could they bring in uh, AOP, the Office of Pain, or the Ascension from WWE to boost the tag division? I'm going to start from the bottom there because I'll be quick about it. I love the Ascension. The 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 I've I've said this before. The version of NXT that was like the legitimate developmental mm-hmm. was my favorite wrestling show on TV. I had a blast watching that. You know, mm-hmm. I'm talking about the Aaron Neville's the champion and and okay. uh, uh, Tyler Breeze and and Tyson Kidd on there representing. You know what I mean? Like those were the days, dude. I just had a blast watching it, and I love the Ascension from there. I saw that they completely were treated like shit after that, but I still really yeah. like them as a team. And I think they have, I, I'd be, I would expect to see them in NWA personally pop up. Mm. I think that just makes more sense for their style of wrestling. I don't see that. I don't see them going to AEW because that they don't fit their brand. I yeah. think that, but if they didn't go somewhere like NWA or MLW or something like that, I think, and I think impacts a good fit for them. I think they could be like a really, really good team. Mm. I think there's similarities to Reno scum in the way they're the way they look. Uh, yeah. That statue, statue stature wise. So I don't, I don't really know if they would do that, but I would love to see them authors of pain. I've never seen them wrestle. So I, I can't even, but just looking at them, I'd have no interest in them. Uh, but so I think I'm actually the complete opposite of you on this one. Uh, and that's because I think, you know, authors of pain, they actually do have a unique look. They're too, you know, big guys. Uh, I think. Oof, I think the guys are like Armenian and and uh, something, but um, two really big guys, and they're just like total butt kickers. You know what I mean? Um, and they're just like giant maulers, and they're like real life. You know, not like your nineteen eighties gassed up tag team you know um they look like two guys that would really be like hired thumb breakers in real life and um and yeah like you know i'd love to see a group like that show up in impact uh i i don't know who they would compete against because the impact tag division is boo-boo right now yeah and um the ascension you know, I hate to say it, man. I think those guys should break up. Uh, they should they should either break up or totally repackage themselves because here's the problem with the Ascension. Um, the way that they were originally presented, fair or not, they just look like a, a bootleg Road Warrior knockoff. Uh, like, they look like somebody like cosplaying like, like the Road Warriors. And... Um, you're just never, ever, ever going to be that ever, ever, ever. And so you need to remove yourself from any semblance of that. And so they should totally repackage themselves. Like, you know, I, you know I, I've i mentioned this and I don't know if you've noticed it, but, you know, Reno Scum did a subtle repackaging. Uh, like, you know, like s- same gimmick for the most part, but the visual changed a lot. Like they had a real like underground punk thing kind of looking with, with their original like look. And to me, they look like neo-Nazis when I first saw them. And I was like, man, this is not cool. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I don't know if they got that from someone else, but they they changed it. You know what I mean? To, to where they just kind of look like, you know, kind of like street biker dudes or whatever now, like a little different. Right. And I was like, this is smart. You know what I mean? This is smart because I, you know, maybe they just weren't aware that that's what they look like. Uh, or, you know, maybe they didn't have anybody around them who was telling them that couldn't be negative, but, you know, apparently, you know, they realized something didn't work and they suddenly repackaged it. And I think, you know, for the Ascension, they could find some way to repackage themselves because again, like, just what they to me, I always saw them as just something that was never going to work. The act was just never going to work 
It was like, um, oh my God. There was this movie in the, it was the 80s or 90s. It was like Michael Keaton. And he was like, he kept making copies of himself. And, but like each copy had like less and less of a brain. <laughs> like, it multiplicity it was, or something along those lines. Yes, it was something like that. And, uh, but that's how I felt the ascension. They were like, yeah. Uh, if demolition was a copy of the Road Warriors, or like if, um, or if the Powers of Pain were a copy of the Road Warriors, and demolition was a copy of Powers of Pain, uh, uh, you, you get to like four or five right. copies down, and you get to like the ascension, like to the not even dot, close uh, wish dot com. Right. <laughs> well, you know, the Ascension, their first gimmick, it was very short lived on NXT. They were like vampires. Okay. If you, if, if you, this was like when Bram was like part of the group. Well, no, he was part of the group or briefly and then re- re- replaced by. You beat up a woman? Victor. Yeah. <laughs> but if you were, to, if you look at this, um, I'm going to look it up for you actually and send it to you. Their, their ring entrance. It was like the lights go blue and everything, dude. It's one mm-hmm. of the coolest ring entrances you'll ever see. And you're going to yeah. see that and be like, why didn't they keep this going? Like it was, I mean, the music was badass. The presentation, right. it was sick. So I'm going I'm to find that later. But um, I think it's more likely that Impact would bring in Kaz Excel and uh, Enzo. Because Kaz Excel was just on Impact. They say it was on Impact Plus show, but I'm just like. Okay. I mean, I think it's one of those like independent shows that then they'll upload it to Impact Plus or whatever. Yeah. That team screams Impact Wrestling, like the type of people that Impact tries to bring in. It screams yeah. that. I mean, it's, I can't believe they're already not part of the company. So <laughs> I feel like on. that's, that's who we'll see. The problem is that they, they'll bring in a new team and they're, they are a new knockout, whatever. And they just, they're in the title picture right away. And right. that shiny new toy thing. And, um, I know I keep name dropping AEW. I'm sorry, but so the, w- what's the storyline they have with with uh, Kazarian and um, uh, Christopher Daniels? The next time they lose, they they're broken up. Right. If that was an impact storyline, dude. They would have beat that to death with with like he hit us over the head with it for about three or four weeks till mm-hmm. they got a title shot and lost and broke up. Like mm-hmm. this is a storyline that's been it started months ago, dude. But they don't really talk about it a whole lot. Right. So that so that when they eventually get the title shot, whatever, everything's just gonna be like really, really organic. It's not yeah, it's not like, hey, we have this storyline where we're gonna break up, let's get it, and then two weeks later get a title shot. Yeah. Just every time someone has a little bit of a story, they're a little bit hot, they just start throwing them in a, the title picture and it's yeah. and we get bored of them, you know what I mean? So I don't know. We just uh, um I know there was two other topics in there. One was Tessa and Deanna. Um, well, he's just basically comment. He's just basically agreeing with what we said that Tess and Deanna is a money match. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. Um, definitely. That, that's, fully- that's the biggest match they could do right now. Although on the topic of Tessa, I was, uh, in a group chat and I was having a conversation with someone about, uh, you know, the whole Tessa thing. And, um, the, and 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 somebody put me on to an interview that La Rosa Negra did. Uh, you know, she basically said she's not going to talk about this whole thing anymore. Because um, this is actually something that happened a long time ago. Right. But, uh, but she, you know, it happened. It, it surfaced when it surfaced, you know, because of Tessa. And, <clears throat> but see, see, I didn't know the details of it. And the details are actually a little bit disturbing. I was... You know, one of the things I was always kind of under the impression is that they were in the ring and they were like having a fight and things got out of hand and some things were said and, you know, and and that was that. And I was always curious as to, you know, why Impact didn't say, hey, let's try to support her and let's try to be like, hey, just like what I said, like, hey, things happen and, you know, who amongst us has not done or said something that we didn't mean in the heat of the moment. Right. And, you know, I think that's something that's a lot more relatable that people can actually get behind in defense. And, you know, I said this about this originally when we talked about it, uh, about this stuff is, you know, when all these things were coming out, all these different allegations about, you know, bullying and 
all this other stuff involving her, you know, and even the guys like Moose and Scorpio Sky who went out of their way to kind of say, hey, we're putting our arms around this person. She's our friend. One thing you didn't see or you didn't hear, you didn't hear anybody going, hey, this is totally out of her character. This is not the person I know. You know what I mean? Yeah. You didn't hear any of that. And so, um, yeah, so I just, you know, listen, the information's out there. I'm not going to delve into it. But um, the, the, the details of the conversation, the argument that led to the, the infamous situation between Tessa and La Rosa Negra, a little bit disturbing, not going to lie, a little, little bit disturbing. Um, it, it, it just makes me qu- totally unnecessary, a totally unnecessary confrontation. Um, and you know, just it, it makes me question what type of person she is, you know. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, I mean, she's not really someone who I can, it's tough to, to lobby for somebody like that to get a job, you know what I mean? Like, it's tough to lobby to bring somebody like that into your locker room. Um, Again, even though having said what I said about, you know, Tessa and Deanna being a money match that I would be interested in seeing. Ah, man, it's just it's one of those things where the the more you dig, the more you're going to find out stuff about this person. That's just not savory. But but I think if she like she put out like a apology or something, it wasn't even an apology. She put out a statement at one point. It was total BS. And yeah, and so but see that's the thing, right? Is that it wasn't an apology. Um, it was it, it was it was basically like defiant, right? She was like yeah, basically talking about like haters trying to bring her down and stuff like that. And it and to and to me, I think that's what made it so much worse because mm-hmm. everyone was like, yo, like have a moment of humility about your your, your crap, you right. know, like you know, just just own own your your faults and your flaws you know say something cop a plea to a lesser charge we've all done that and um yeah you know like you know like like, let let, let, we can move on here but there's got to be some give on your part yeah she was just willing you know not willing to do any sort of give you know uh not make any sort of pen penance or you know anything not even own that she did the thing, any of the things. I th- you know I th- what I mean? I think wrestling fans are would be willing to be for forgiving. I think we have to be more forgiving as a society. I mean, the other day I was, um, someone was bringing up Mike Vick, and I I don't agree with like what he did back then at all. But I was just I said, dude, are we still holding this against them to this day? You know, like are we are we assuming that? the years that have passed it's probably been a decade for all i know i don't really we're just gonna assume that there's no growth in this person i mean i think we have to be a little more forgiving as a society but there has to be that give too like there has to be um see so now i think i think that's like a total the total opposite of what we're talking about here right because you're talking about like mike vick and this is someone who you know went to jail legal legally you know, literally paid for their crime. You know what I mean? Li- literally paid their debt to society for their crime, right? Um, and if you, if if this person, whoever it was that was bringing up Mike Vick, you know, like if you've listened to Mike Vick talk, he's been nothing but remorseful and reflective, right, of who he was at the time that he made those decisions, you know, and everything with the dog fighting and all that other stuff. Um, Whereas this, right, is the total opposite. Total opposite, right? Like, from from her part, no sort of accountability. Well, yeah, that's why I'm saying there has to be that give, like, like right, we, exactly. Give, you know, there's. I was comparing to Mike Vick because I said like, there's still people who are just they're gonna hold stuff against you forever. Yeah, you're not even gonna make any kind of leeway unless you you have some kind of compassion, you know, and, and stuff for Vick. I I messed up, but you know, I think that you know, in in general, impact the beautiful thing about wrestling, right? Wrestling is television and television is storytelling, right? And so, you know, you can make new stars. You just got to tell us good stories. Yeah. You know what I mean? You just got to tell us good stories. It would help if, you know, if you had like, Nevaeh is a a relatively new talent on Impact. 
Well, you know, Kimberly is a, a relatively new talent on Impact. You know, you can tell us a story that makes these people stars. You know, yeah. the, we, we could, there's there's some other presentation things that can, you know, be uh, fixed up a little mm-hmm. bit yeah. <laughs> in some of those cases. But um, but for the most part, like, you could still, you could still tell us a story, right, that could make a... Um, a perfect example, right? Like on, on Monday Night Raw, Bobby Lashley is killing people with the full Nelson right now. You know what I mean? Like you got you 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 got wrestlers going above and beyond, doing backflips and trying to do everything they can to come up with something to entertain the crowd. And Bobby Lashley is killing people with a full Nelson right now. <laughs> it's all about storytelling. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you just got to tell us. You got to tell me a convincing story that this thing no matter how many times I've seen it, no matter how down it might appear, you just got to tell me the story that this thing is hot and popping right now. Yeah. So as much as we say that, you know, Tessa would be the shot in the arm that the Impact Division needs, you know, why can't you tell me a story that turns Nevaeh into this unstoppable heel or this yeah. or this baby face underdog that needs to get her shot. I agree. I totally agree. I've always said that the the wrestler the girl who I think is on par with Tessa Blanchard is uh Rachel Ellering. She mm. just doesn't have this is my personal opinion. But she doesn't have the there's things about her to look that don't match up with Tessa. And I yeah. get that. But from like a wrestling standpoint, like to me she was always really effing good. Hmm. Um, it, it's, it's up, but, but, you know, you can present someone to, in, in a way to get it up to that level. Um, there's some restrictions of course, but I, I think that you can get somebody up there. The last thing I'll, I'll say though, is that, you know, uh, Allison K Sienna, you know, someone hmm. I know fairly decently and have had personal conversations. Um, I mean like in-person conversations with and stuff like yeah. that at the time of the May young classic, she was like, there's a girl in this thing that deserves to fall flat on her face and she, but she was very like i'm not uh, just leaving it at that you know and then when the tessa stuff came out you know she it was clear to me that's who she was talking about because yeah. then she was just like hey you know she's basically a piece of shit you know that's yeah what she was saying and but this is but this is someone who you know again i've kind of i i've been around a person several times and feel like I would believe her if she if she was like, hey, this is this is how she is. Like, yeah, I would believe her personally. So, right, you know, what what yeah. was the what was that? Yeah, right. What was the other thing that he he had a comment on? I, I, I <clears throat> told myself in my head. Um, I, I think he said things. Ace Austin should, since he had to qualify twice. No, that was that was the the last one. The one where I was like, I, I lost my train of thought. I had I, I was saying that because um, right now we're just getting. <laughs> Him versus TJP. And oh, the, oh. Uh, do you think they're waiting for Zelina Vega's 90-day non-compete to be up with WWE before they bring her in? So I don't know if you saw this. This news came out like two or three days ago that she has signed with something. Uh-huh. It's not AEW. Mm-hmm. But whatever she has signed with, and it's not even confirmed that it's a wrestling company. Right. That contract will not allow her to work with AEW right now. Hmm. So... If we're talking wrestling, if she signed with the NWA, she's probably got her money right now. So she's probably not like, let me lock down a salary job. Like she's, you know, I'm saying I say that because it's not far off to say, hey, she might show up at Impact or NWA and collect some per appearance checks. Right. But if she showed up at NWA, there's no reason they wouldn't let her go do AEW stuff. If she showed up at NWA, probably the same thing because they, they let MJF do AEW for a while right he was contracted to both companies impact would let her do it so the only the only thing is if she if she's headed and it's supposed to be a short-term deal whatever it is so if it's wrestling ring of honor would make the most sense because they're trying to revamp that women's division or she's signed on to do some kind of acting Mm, which mm. makes probably the most sense that she's not allowed to wrestle (laughs) but i don't think she's we, we, we it's easy to be like oh impact needs to bring this person impact needs to bring this person and like they they are going to have a hard time convincing people 
come here instead of AEW. Like it's just the the nature of it. It's not you know there's not a company I support more than I sub- support Impact. But I'm, we're just being real here. There's not there's not a lot of hey come here instead of there that they're gonna you know you know dude we, we talk about basketball where I'm a Clipper fan you're a Laker fan you're like there's not I was telling someone the other day okay in in a Clipper forum they're like we should sign Andre Drummond I said we can't offer something right now that the Lakers we we, we don't have a, a a leg up on them we just don't last year was different we were here right but they won a championship now we we don't have oh we'll come here and we can try to beat them you know what i'm saying like right. you, the, the the story that the lakers are old news and you know this is the new thing i don't know if that plays as well now as it doesn't it work this year this time last year right and i'm being real as, as a clipper fan I'm being 100 real it doesn't work this year it worked last year it doesn't work now so right. there's very little that you're, you're gonna say okay well we can offer you this that you can't there because it's the good things that impact is with with the creative con- control and all that stuff like aw offers that too yeah so it, it's 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 easy for us to be like oh well we need to sign selena vega like there it, it's gonna be hard for them to bring people in it, it just is so yeah but you know what but again i think that like you know again if impact is gonna be a the the the, the biggest thing impact needs is fresh talented faces like it, impact has settled into a place of being a developmental uh company right now and i think that's okay for other companies I, yeah yeah i think that's okay but the thing is that like because again you talked about like nxt right when nxt was truly a developmental brand they were still putting out good television like the people who got to watch sasha banks develop and got to watch you know big e's you know, fledgling, uh, you know, whatever he was becoming. And like, they were still, they were putting together good stuff that people were interested in seeing. And Impact can still do that. You know what I mean? Impact can still put together quality television with people that the world, for the most part, doesn't really know. There's a lot of talent out there. You just got to find them and put them on TV and give them good stories to do. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I really don't think... I really don't think that there's, you know, that much of a shortage. I think that there's a shortage of, of, you know, like big names because again, you know, WWE went on a signing spree once, uh, once AEW started working with everybody, they were like, well, Hey, we're not going to work with anybody else, but we will sign everybody, you know? Right. Right. And, um, but, and, you know, you see WWE went and started the, uh, the, the, the WWE UK brand or NXT UK, you know, because of all the UK talent over there. So, but there's still talent out there, man. There's still talent and it's just up to the companies to find them, find them and, and give them a spotlight. Yeah. So um, yeah. I mean, I cut you off. No, no, I'm not. So, so I was going to say, dude, when NWA came back, people were like, do they even have a roster? And I was the first people to tell you, like, you can always sign people. Like, it, they act like because a few dudes left that, oh, what the, let's go out of business. You know, like, there's not talent available out there. Mm-hmm. But you have to know what your your niche is. And I think every wrestling company knows their target audience. I've talked about this before. I don't think Impact knows that target audience. I think they're trying to say, hey, we have a good wrestling show. Come check us out. I don't think they're like, this is our target. This is that that niche that we're gonna like settle into, and we're gonna right. we're we're gonna pull these dudes in. So, with, when NWA has a niche, like they're able to say, "Hey, we're gonna. This is what we're looking for." And there's there's wrestlers back. Well, I got that. I I I can do that. So they right. they brought people in, and they they're doing this thing where, you know, because Thunder Rosa is actually part of NWA, not AEW, but she mm-hmm. runs her own Mission Pro Wrestling Company. So like they're doing this thing where she's, uh bringing in talent from mission pro wrestling like they're doing aw dark stuff too don't get me wrong but it's it's being known on a- nwa like hey she's she's bringing in some girls from her company right almost like when we see them when they we know their tryouts and it's it's like just some some of that kind of terminology that lets us know like hey we're, we're bringing in some fresh girls to see how they do and 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 it's something that the fans would have interest in too like oh who's she gonna bring in next you know what i mean so there's always there's always people, but you, you got to have, you got to bring them a, re- you got to give them a reason because if right. you got dark and you got dark elevation, like, dude, what, 
why would a, a and and that has more eyes than watching an impact show like why would someone want to come over to impact so you have to find a way to be like hey this is what we can offer you that you can't get there and until they're able to do that I, I think it's just going to be difficult to get those fresh faces. They're out there, yeah. but you have to, you have to give the, them them that added incentive, right? You know, it's like I think I brought it up last week. You know, Angelina Love said, you know, I WWE is going to keep me in developmental, or TNA said, hey, we'd be on pay per view tomorrow. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like they offered, yeah. they were able, so right, but yeah. I think that's what it is. And I think that, you know, Impact has to look at, you know, what do we really have to offer? And, um, you know, they they still have stuff to offer. <clears throat> Impact yeah. has done a great job of generating buzz periodically at times over, again, the last couple of years. And so, um, and they were on something really big here just a few weeks ago with the AEW partnership. And so I don't think it'd be hard to get that sparked up. Uh, they just got to, you know, and again, Listen, like I said, if you're watching AEW Dynamite, you know, this week and Deanna Perrazzo shows up, puts Brick Br- in her armbar, we're off to a whole new ball game. Uh, yep. You know what I mean? Whole new ball game. If, uh, you know, Hangman Page finishes his match and Moose shows up and spears him, whole new ball game. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's just, it, it's like, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? What are you going to do to try and, shift the tide back way like it you know i know like you're grateful the AEW is uh giving you the rub by just being involved but you know you gotta you gotta do something to get the momentum going back in your favor right but you're right they have ability in short spurts to really get people talking it's just the consistency is not not there so yeah is that so that's it right that's gonna be it for the comments yeah that, that's it for the comments thank you guys thank you everybody for your comments please keep the comments coming back in we're gonna you know get this get back to shouting you out every week you know coming with the good comments drop a question you know what's something you want to hear us talk about let us know drop it in the comment section and we'll get back to you so um you know thanks for your comments and keep them coming for sure Oh, yeah. So we appreciate you guys. We will be back very, very soon with another another episode of The Cool Factor. So for TW, I am BQ. You guys have a good one. We are out. Peace.